Okay, we're going to uh, talk about quadratic inequalities in, uh, in this next video. This is something I usually don't cover until after I've covered section 2.5, uh, but some of your teachers might cover this earlier. But anyway, let's, let's suppose you want to solve a quadratic inequality like this. Um, algebraically, the, what we're going to do <clears throat> is uh, you get zero on one side, so we're talking about this. And then, and then we're going to factor, so you get this. The reason why we're doing that is because we're asking a question, when is the product of two things less than zero? Now, the product of two things being less than zero, uh, wouldn't they have to have different signs? Wouldn't one have to be negative and the other one positive? So that's really what we're doing here. We're asking when is, what, what circumstances would give up one of, the, one of these factors positive, one of these factors negative? Well, the easiest way to do that is, is to make what's called a sign chart where what we do is we um, we actually plot the um, the two places where there are zero at four and negative one, negative one and four and then we look at these factors and ask ourselves what is the sign of each of these factors in each of these regions like to the left of negative one like how about negative two if you plug in negative two into this factor isn't it going to be negative six which is negative if you plug in negative 2 into this one, you get negative 1, which is negative. So then let's pick a number between negative 1 and 4, like how about 0? When you plug in 0 into this one, you get negative 4, which is negative. When you plug in 0 into here, you get 1. So th this, uh, this factor is actually positive from negative 1 to 4. Then let's pick a number to the right of 4, like how about 10? When you plug in 10, they're both positive. So what we've done is we've determined the sign of each factor in each of the regions. So th the question is, in which region do they have opposite signs? The answer is between negative 1 and 4. So that's just a nice way to organize your work. Now, the reason why I don't usually cover this till section 2.5 is because by that time we've already talked about the graphs of, of these quadratic functions. Let's take a look, talk about the graph. If you think of this function y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4, we're asking when is the graph below the x-axis? When, when, when is the y coordinate negative means when is, when is the graph below the x-axis? And you can, you can see it really well. The reason why it's between negative 1 and 4 is because the y coordinates dip down below the x-axis from negative 1 to 4. So the graphical idea helps a lot. It helps to understand the algebraic method. Let's do another one. Well, let me give you one to try. Why don't you try this one? See if you can do this one. Go ahead and hit the pause button. Okay, to solve this quadratic inequality, you're going to want to multiply it out and get zero on one side. Did you do that? And then you're going to want to factor, so we get down to this level. So the question is, when is the product of two things greater than zero? Well, uh, let's see, that would mean they both have to have the, the same sign, wouldn't it? So either they're both negative, either both factors are negative or both factors are positive. And the best way to, to answer that question is to make a sign chart. So we're going to make a sign chart for, for these two um, factors here, x minus 2 and x plus 1. Remember, you plot where there's 0 on the x-axis. Negative 1 makes this 0, 2 makes this 0. And then you just investigate the, the sign of each of these factors in between each of these numbers. So let's just pick a test point to the left of negative 1, like how about negative 2? Plug in negative 2 into here, you get negative 4, which is negative. Plug in negative 2 here, you get negative 1, which is negative. Uh, a good test point to check in here would be 0. Pick 0, plug it into each of them. This becomes negative 2. This becomes a positive 1, so this, this factor is positive. And then pick a test point to the right of this number 2, like how about 100? That makes both of them positive. So when is the product greater than 0? They both have to be negative or they both have to be positive. So the, the solution is x less than negative 1 or x greater than 2. And again, if you look at the graph of this function here, I'm talking about the function x squared minus x minus 2, when is the graph greater than 0? That's precisely when the graph is above the x-axis. So you notice the graph is above the x-axis when x is less than negative 1. The graph is above the x-axis when x is greater than 2. So that sort of shows you why this method works. See if you can do this one.
Okay, so you multiply it out. I get everything on one side, zero on the other. I don't particularly care much for that negative x squared. That's going to be hard to factor. What, what could I do? I think I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. That makes that a positive x squared. That makes that a negative 8x. That makes that a positive 12. So after I clean it out, this is, this is what I'm talking about. It factors. By the way, if you were to graph this function here, y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12, when is it greater than 0? Doesn't it look like the answer should be um, x less than 2 or x greater than 6? Let's see if that's what how this comes out to be. But if, if, this is, if, the, if I did this right, the graphs above the x-axis when x is less than 2 and when x is greater than 6. Anyway, so once we factor it, then we make a sign chart, remember? You find where the where the factors are 0 at 6 and 2, and then you just have to pick test points. We're testing the sign of these factors. The product is going to be greater than or equal to 0 when they're both factors are negative or both factors are positive. So let's pick a test point like 0 to the left of 2. You plug in 0, they're both negative. How about like 4? Plug in 4 here into both of them. This becomes positive. This is still negative. Pick a test point to the right of 6, like how about 100? They're both positive. So when is, when is the product positive? When do they both have the same sign? x less than 2 or x greater than 6. And now you could write that as interval notation. It would be it would be negative infinity to 2 union 6 to infinity. So set notation, set of all x such that x is less than 2 or x is greater than 6. And interval notation, it would be everything to the left of 2 open, everything to the right of 6 open. All right. Got time for a little bit more here. Got two more. Why don't you get a piece of paper and try these, these two. We'll go over these in just a minute. All right, the first one, I divided by 3. Does that seem like a good idea? And then move the 4 over. So I'm really asking, when is the graph of y equals x squared minus 4 below the x-axis, right? Anyway. Uh, algebraically, though, you'd factor this, make a sign chart. When is the product negative or equal to zero? That's when they have opposite signs, right? So that, that's what the sign chart is determining, when they have opposite signs. If you pick x to the left of negative 2, plug it in. This one's negative. Plug in like negative 10. That's negative and that's negative. What's a good number to pick between negative 2 and 2? How about zero? Plug in zero into this one, you get positive 2. Plug in zero here, you get negative 2. And a good test point to the right of 2 would be like 100. They're both positive. So when is the product negative? It's when they have opposite signs. It's everything between negative 2 and 2. Close interval, negative 2 to 2. Set of all x such that um, negative 2 is less than x is less than, less than or equal to... Negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Everything between negative 2 and 2 closed on both sides. Okay? Now for the last one, this one's kind of sneaky. To solve this one, it's not really a quadratic equation, uh, inequality, but you do it the same way. You factor the left side. You get three uh, factors, so you're going to make a sign chart with three things in there. Now the interesting question is, when is the product of three things greater than or equal to zero? Well, let's see. They could all be positive, or wouldn't you have to have like two of them negative? So that's more complicated. That's why the, this sign chart is a really good idea. We're asking, though, when is the graph of this function of, of, um, above the x-axis, or, or on the x-axis, right? Anyway, so you, you plot each of these factors, and you plot where they're 0, and then you pick a test point. Let's pick, like, negative 10 to the left of negative 3. This is negative. When you plug in negative 10 here, they're all negative. Let's pick, like, negative 1 and test these factors. This becomes negative. This is positive. This is negative. Let's pick a point like x equal 1 over here. Plug it in this. Well, pick x equal 1 and plug it in each of the factors. Uh, these two are positive. This one's still negative. And then pick a number like 100. They're all positive. When is the product of three things positive? Well, it would be the region negative 3 to 0 or greater than 3. So you say negative 3 is less than or equal to x or less than or equal to 0 or x is greater than or equal to 3. In, um, so in uh, interval notation, close on negative 3, close on 0, union, close on 3 to infinity, and so on. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.